Hello, my name is John Doe, right here in Tokyo, Japan. Now, the announcement was just made, very recently, at the time of me recording this, that yes indeed, the Olympics in 2020 will be right here, in Tokyo, Japan. Now, it goes without saying that the Olympics, of course, are extremely bourgeois kind of event. So, really, no one should be surprised that, that Tokyo was awarded this. Now, reason why? Well, look at the three top candidate countries. You had Spain, Turkey, and Japan. Now you have to look at which group of bourgeois capitalist controllers have the most power and influence in the world. Well, that's of course the, the ones we have here in Japan. So they can throw the most money around, they can put the most influence and get what they want. So of course now they have it. This brings up of course Fukushima and the efforts that were put into during this opportunity when Japan's in the spotlight for people to speak up and rise up and say hey look wait a minute before you make this decision to give Tokyo the Olympics look 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 now would that actually have an effect who knows? Because now the decision's been made. But it really wouldn't matter. Because, like I said, the campus bourgeois in Japan, out of the three countries, do have the most influence and power. Of course, they have um, the most power when you speak of um, political political economy. They're the, they're the most powerful. Their economy is the strongest. So they're going to be awarded this. But the opportunity was still there to speak up, to rise up, to say that look at this multiple meltdown of Fukushima. Look at how ridiculous that the Japanese government's dealing with it. Not, as of, as of now, not really dealing with it. And look at all the things TEPCO's doing. Look at all the things coming out of this. Look at this reality that keeps getting worse, like the material conditions here that can continue to deteriorate. Now, did I see an effort to do that? Yes. But this is a lesson learned. Now, let's look at the successes that were happened here. Fukushima got into the mainstream media again, especially the Western media. You saw it all over the place, you know. But it's also a lesson learned that it exposed a weakness in the people's efforts to speak up and rise up. It exposed a lack of organization, a lack of having things put together, having a, a people's system for this movement. It's still very, very random, and it's still very, very um, loose, especially in the Western effort. I can tell you here in Japan that those who are brave enough and courageous enough to take to the streets, to speak up, they are highly organized, and they do have it together. They do have a people's system. A people's way that they've chosen and they've made decisions about how they're going to go about things. They really have their, their stuff together. And I know some of these people. A lot of them are, are, youth, are the youth. But there's also older people who do have experience who are helping. Especially when you get into the um, Tokyo, the Metropolitan Coalition Against Nukes. They really got it together and they have a lot of elder leadership. But you also have uh, leftist collectives who are much younger, 
and very informal, but they're really, really highly organized. And that's my suggestion here for Western efforts against nuclear power and against nuclear weapons. It exposed your weakness this time. Because, yeah, it got in the mainstream media, but there was no push, a strong push, when Japan actually had to get up on the world stage, when the Japanese bourgeois had to sit there and tell their lies. They were not hammered hard enough, clearly. Now, when they had, now there was journalists who did speak up and ask the questions about Fukushima, but there weren't a lot of them. But there were some of them, and they really, really gave it to the Japanese leadership. But the lie kept on being told. And what I saw there was people were not seeing that and picking up on that enough. Saying, look, the questions are being asked, and here's the lie being told. For example, at the press conference a few days before this decision was made, the Japanese officials kept on saying, everything's completely fine and safe here in Japan. Tokyo will be no problem. Don't worry about Fukushima. We got this. Okay. There was one point I was researching when I saw this happening, and I was holding off to make the video until now. I was looking for something that Arnie Gunderson said. Now, that's someone I almost never mentioned, but he, he's a nuclear expert. Highly experienced. Building nuclear power plants, maintaining nuclear power plants, and keeping these things under control when they have problems. And I was watching something he was doing. He said, he does lots of presentations, and he was talking about how he went to, to right here in Tokyo, Japan. And he didn't but choose particular spots where he knew there was a hot spot or something like that. He just took random samples, drain pipes, and things like that. And he collected those samples, and he got them through customs in Japan, took them back to America and sent him off to be um, studied and analyzed. And he said the response he got back from these labs was that the samples he was given was considered to be nuclear waste and had to be sent to a special place to even be disposed of. And you have the Japanese officials getting in front of the world stage saying everything's fine. So that's an example. I'll put a link to where you can see Arnie Gunnarsson talking about that. That's what I'm talking about. Those opportunities to get that type of thing out, to re rebuttal. And one more suggestion. Be really careful about going off on crazed, angry rants when you talk about your movement, when you're dealing with your movement, because when you do that, it doesn't do yourself any favors. It makes you look crazy. Immediately, society puts the tinfoil hat on your head and writes you off. So, be careful with the reactionary stuff. Zero in on key opportunities to give rebuttals instead of just information. Rebuttals are also important, and that's what's something I'm probably going to focus on a bit more in upcoming videos, to look for chances to give rebuttals, to say, look, no, you're not saying that. This is not what the real situation is. Here's what's really going on. And you got to back it up with solid information, reliable sources for original source material, which is kind of hard to do sometimes, and I know that's a challenge. And you got to organize it and present it in a way it's easy for people to get. So we saw the opportunity here. You saw the successes you had. And then you saw the missed opportunities and the failures you had. So again, this bourgeois mega event is coming to Tokyo in 2020. Please review everything I said in this video. And I'll, I'll try to put a few links to a couple of things we look at in the description box below. And if it's the first time you've seen me and you enjoy this video, please subscribe. I'd love to have contact, interaction with everybody. So until next time, this is me, John Dole, 
in Tokyo, Japan. Check it out.